Hi there folks, Kevin here. Welcome along. Um, this is my fourth video and I'm going to try something new in this one. I'm going to try and do a bit of gardening. I've not really done much in the previous ones. So, it's. Um, I was going to say the weather's beautiful. It was. It started raining. <laughs> so, it was like, oh dear, yes, I'll be absolutely pulling it down. But, but I got a bit of seed sowing done. Um, I always get a bit bored sowing seeds, you know. Ooh, riddling the compost and getting it in, but you know, once you start growing, I love it. I'm like, you know, I'm like hovering over them like, as if it's a newborn baby. But um, so I've got some seeds, I've got the old flower seeds and that I've got need to get done today, and some of the other things like uh, some calories and a few other things. I've got some more potatoes, I've done some yesterday, I've got some more to do um, today. Uh, I do them in bags, uh, I've done them in bags the first time last year, and I used to do them in the ground when they had the allotment in the UK. And you probably get more potatoes when you're doing them in the ground rather than the bags, but I once sort of annoyed me in the ground. <laughs> I said, no, it's once you've got the most of them out, it's archaeological dig, try to get the last few ones out, you know, you're down there with a wee brush and going through all the soil. So, doing them in bags last year, loved it. Put a tap all in, down the ground, tip the bag up, get the kids to get the potatoes out, and uh, job's a good one. So I'll get I'll get that done. I want to sow the first of my peas today as well. So um, God, I forgot day one. So I'll um, so I'm going to get some Kelvin Wonder on the go, and I've got some Hoss Green Shaft as well there. But I'll I'll maybe sow them during the week. So I want to get them. I've also got a whole load of bulbs and roots that I got way back in February. Um, they've been on top of the compost bin for the last week, so I have them off. I had to get them, they were, up, they were in the front porch <laughs> since February. Could hardly get in and out the front door. Having the abseil out the bedroom window to get you work in the morning. So the, the, the missus was quite happy that they, they've been out for the past few days. So I want to get them in. I'll try, I'll try and... Uh, I'll get them planted, I'll try and sort of edit in a few photographs of what they will look like hopefully in a few months time. Um, I'm saying that, I don't know, I've never done it before, so we'll see how we're going. You know, maybe we'll have a spiel about new kid in town. So I'll try and uh, sort of get that done. It's um, started raining, bugger. You know? Although, see that, my dad when we were younger, any time, I used to help him, it used to be a scaffold on any time. Just to help him when I was a teenager for sort of a, a wee bit of money on the side. And dogs are like, come on, get out of there, your skin's waterproof. <laughs> it wasn't funny then, it's not funny now, but needs must. So I'll just, I'll show you what the beds are like first, and then uh, I'll get on with stuff, we be getting stuff planted and that. Okay, let's go. Okay folks, uh, let's see what we've got to play with, with regards to the beds. So. Big pile of seaweed, I need to sort of shred and do something with it. Garlic's getting on strong, it's looking real good, happy with that. It's a bit brown at the edges, but some nice real green shoots coming up in the middle there. So, okie doke, cordyline. They're in cheap flower buckets at the moment, and um, I'm maybe, I'm going to keep them in there over the year and try and get some nice pots, bigger pots, for next year and uh, eventually put them in there. So, let's see what we're playing with. Okay, so, there's no up the uh, workstation. So, yep, it's all empty beds at the moment. Need to do a work in between them, try and, now that the weather's picked up a little bit, try and, uh, obviously, I'm not that worried about weeds, and I'm not that worried about great, having a great lawn, but um, I'm going to sort of recall that of stuff out. I, I, I sort of trimmed round about the beds yesterday in the rain. Um, so I'll recall that rubbish out and get some cheap compost mixed with some grass seed and get it in over the coming years. So again, yeah, beds are all sort of, uh, they need a bit of a tickle. I mean I've, I've uh, went for no dig this year just to roll it back a little bit. I dug all these beds uh, in the winter of 2016 and the sort of spring 2017 last year. 
because I think I've said before, I mean, this was all old raspberry bushes, brambles, lawn, and I had to dig because it was getting that stuff out, plus there was a whole load of stones and roots from the trees and such things, so, but I've never dug it since, and I tell you what, weed-wise, it's not looking too bad, I'm, I'm sort of really, I'm, I'm sort of glad I'm going that way. Now, there are some weeds, you get the odd grass, but whatever, but mulching honestly is the way to go i mean just at the beginning of the winter last year i put a whole load of cardboard down i've put grass clippings shredded leaves seaweed and you know you sort of put it all up and it's it's uh, quite it's, it's sank down a little bit but i've got some homemade compost that i want to get down either today or you know over the coming days and these areas are sort of really ready to get planted into once the stuff's ready. I'll just show you the state the little hanging baskets. I mean, the, the jackdaws and, and even some of the other birds are coming just ripping that jute's liner to shreds. So I've got some spare liners there. I've got strawberries. I don't know if I'm going to keep strawberries in the hanging baskets. I had flowers in them, petunias and that last year. But uh, yeah, they need a work. How they're still managing to stay in there, I, I don't know. What is good, and you can see that spring's coming, and say, it's starting to get a few leaves on the red currant bush, and say, uh, yep, yeah, looking forward to that. Little rosemary, still alive. So, again, I'll let that go on, and there's a little wee red currant bush that I only put in a couple of months ago, and again, there's a few leaves start to appear on that, so I'm not expecting anything from that this year, but at least it's, at least it's alive. Hello. Right, coming up to the back, and this is the area that doesn't really get any sort of sunshine. And, yeah, the rhubarb's doing all right. I mean, this is a sort of newish one that I only put in, I think, in February time. And it's fine. Yep, it's all right. This one, I'm a wee bit concerned. I mean, it got a bit... I put this one in, I think, December sometime. And it's been a bit battered with the snow and the ice and whatever. So you can see around a bit the, ed the edge of the leaves. But I don't know if it's a big fat pigeons came and stood in that one. That was a new fresh leaf there and it's, it's sort of broken off. So, I don't know. Now this thing, I don't particularly like it, but... Um, but that was it yesterday. A whole load of bees and whatever round about it, so it'll stay there. And a little fern. I, I'm a wee bit concerned about that. I mean, it's going to stay there, but I, I don't know if it's. I don't know if it's dead. Um, I'll keep it there. See what it's like. And just sort of drag it around. And this is the the little sort of troublesome corner that I've had. I still get the edge of the, the bed to sort of finish off there, but uh, yeah. So I managed to. I've got as much stones out as possible, but I was, I was sort of losing the ability to live. So I've got the beds not finished. Now, I don't know if you can see, there's a bit of a drainage problem in between them. There's, um, but I'll try and level that off and get the fork in and get a bit of sand down and some compost and grass seeds. But, um, and see how, no, there's not a great rush for everything, is there? And I've got some of the homemade compost on them and there's still quite a few little bits of twigs and whatever still in it but again not concerned they can stay there because everything that's going in here is going to be sort of transplanted you know i'm not really i might try and direct so some uh, some flower seeds into this little bed mainly it's for this one i've got a, a red currant bush and a black currant bush that i want to move I was hoping to do, get it done for this year, but uh, things are running a wee bit late, so they'll be going in there. So I'll, I'll try and get some flowers and whatever in there. Take you around to this side of the garden. Excuse, excuse the sun. Jesus, imagine saying that. Strawberries need a good bit of work. Uh, when I say a good bit of work, just a wee bit of, get a wee bit of weed in and uh, might give them a little feed. And... Get something down on there. 
and again just sort of taking it down it's best to get some homemade compost in it i want to get some onions in there hopefully today we'll see how we get on and again the the paths in between need uh, a bit of work to try and get some grass in between them but i'm not that precious about grass i mean there's a load of weeds in there you play football on grass and that's about it you know so whether there's weeds in between it i'm not that bothered i mean they're not great they're not grass is not a great pollinator or anything so just makes things look a wee bit better and on top of the compost bins you can see this is some of the stuff i want to get planted today so okay let's go on with things Okay, let's start with something easy, potatoes. Now, again, as I said before, I grow them in bags. Uh, what a few people here in Ireland do, and I'm going to try it this year, is uh, line the bottom of the bag with seaweed. Yeah, you'll be sick of me banging on about seaweed as we go in. So, um, I'll put the seaweed to about three or four inches, top it up, to about a third of the bag with cheap compost, possibly put in a wee bit of potato fertiliser. I'll plonk about three potatoes in this bag and I'll just show you the potatoes. <sighs> Looking great, chips whatever on them are all nice and purple. So, okay, I won't, I won't get through the whole process because I know how you, you already know how to plant spuds, so I'll show you once I'm finished. Let's go. Okay, so that's the spuds in the bag. I uh, forgot to say to you, um, these are charlottes. We love charlottes. They're great. They're, I mean, they come in all sorts of sizes, big ones, little ones, and um, we don't really eat much potatoes as a family. I know that's a bit sacrilege here and a uh, bit of blasphemy here in Ireland, but, um, but yeah, I mean, normally we'll eat them either, small ones that are steamed, boiled. Um, and salads and um, some of the bigger ones we like to they're great for a base for various soups and whatever so right I'll get these covered up as I said before up to about half of the bag and again when the when the sort of leaves are, are homes that sort of protruding out I just keep on topping up the the compost with the I'll probably add a wee bit of fish blood and bone to the compost when I'm adding it up just to try and feed it over the next uh, few months so that's it. And uh, if uh, Clarisse from Clarisse's French Garden is looking there, uh, je plante les tatis. Or I think some of the common people over there call them pommes de terres, but uh, that's just that's just a riffraff. Okay, I'll get these shoved on top of the old coal bunker next to the back of the house. And uh, on to the next job. Okay, next little job. And again, another easy one. Is let's get the onions in. Uh, I'm, I'm growing two lots of onions. Uh, one centurion, which I'm just planting straight from set in the ground, and I've the other ones grown in modules in the house for the past couple of weeks. Can't remember, but I don't know Sturon or Stuttgart. Or, so I mean, it's not as if I've got a great range of onions, but um, but they're they're getting on brilliant. They're shooting up. So it's not really an experiment, but I thought I'd just put one straight in the ground, and then a couple of days later I'll I'll get the ones in from uh, inside the house into the ground. So, as I said, this wee area, it's got my own homemade compost, but I've put a wee thin layer of shop bought compost just to help the roots sort of get in there. So, canes are looking a bit bent, aren't they? <laughs> they've, been, they've been standing up right over the winter. But it's just to give me a general idea. Now, I'll be planting these pretty close together because I'm not that bothered about the size. And again, I'm only doing white onions this year. As you saw, you, you all know the sort of problems we have with red onions and I've done them. It, it's been a bit hit and miss over the years. Some years have been great. Last year, like I think I only got about half of the ones that I planted. The rest are all bolted. So I'm not giving them. I'm, I'm limited with space. So forget it. I'm just doing white onions this year and uh, hope to try and maybe get about 50. I'm only planting about 20 odd of these centurion. As I said, I've got about tw uh, 25, 26 in the house. 
of the other ones <laughs> that I can't remember the name of. So, as I said, another wee easy job. I like to do the easy jobs first, keeps me motivated. I think the bone stuff that's on the seeds I normally have a can of beer with and the bones. But anyway, I'm rambling. Let's get on with it. Okay, that's them done. Now, I've deliberately left a bit of space at the back <coughs> near the wall just to try and get some flowers in. And again, there's going to be a space here at the front of the bed for more flowers. So, we'll get the other ones planted up next couple of days and we'll see how we got on. Right, next easy job. Right, I'm going to get some of the cheap roses in. Now, just using the hand trowel, digging down here to make a sort of hole. You can see it's just pure clay in there. And I've dug out a few stones as well, some big ones. You're thinking, how did I miss that the first time? There's still quite a few down there, but um, oh, that'll be all right. You'll be fine. But if you just compare that, it's a horrible grey clay soil to some of the compost, the homemade compost on top. So I'll need to get a good bit of compost. I'll probably put a bit of sand down there as well, just to try and help with drainage. What I did notice digging it out, loads of worms in there, so good stuff. So, right, let's go on with it. Right, so I've got the cheap roses planted and um, but I don't know if you can hear it, it's absolutely pouring it down outside again, so I'm stuck here in the shed. So, I mean, I don't know if you can see me because it's pitch black in here. It's the darkest, dingiest shed in the world. Although, I don't know, something, is, is that a is that wee solar panel thing keeps on clicking on and off? But, um, but oh, get in the picture. But, um, yeah, I did clean this shed out last week. And uh, it was a bit similar weather to this, it was pouring down, so I was thinking, right, uh, okay, I need to do something constructive. And, uh, that was, a, oh, that was a job. I mean, I had a couple of drinks down there, because it's not a job you would do sober. So you put your hands forward, it's good to see a thing, you were touching all sorts of creatures. So, right, I've got a whole load of stuff. I might have to do this over a couple of days, this video. Um, so, if this passes over, I've been stuck here for about half an hour. Um, I've got a few more bulbs and different things that I want to go in the ground. So today's a doing day, and I need to do stuff. So I'll have a can of beer and then wait, see how this goes on, and come back to you in a bit. Okay. Okay. Right. Next to Glen is uh, well, I got this wee pack uh, out of Lidl, Lidl or Aldi. I'm not too sure. And uh, twenty-four bulb color collection. But I'm thinking, what was I thinking of? It's all orange. Yeah. Orange is not really my colour. It's, uh, it's a bit garish looking, isn't it? But, uh, so you've got uh, some Dahlia Deco Orange. I think you only get about one bulb. You've got Lilium Brunello, which is a lily, obviously. And you've got Montbretia, Montbretia Orange. Looks alright, but I'm going to get on with um, well, I don't you know. I watched one of um, Hot Hugo's videos the other day, they haven't uh, he was talking about gladiolus. Gladiolus, I always thought they were gladioli, but um, there's, there's obviously a sort of plural singular uh, thing in there. I should have checked it before I, before I started and come on here and talk rubbish. So, I'm going to plant the gladiolus first and then I've got another couple of wee balls to get in afterwards so okay here we go again it's how you stuff in it oh don't you see this is brilliant right so that's where the the gladiolus is going I mean I've not planted them yet I'm just uh, trying to plan where they're going and uh, I'll just show you that wee cheap rose this is the Cronenberg which is uh, it's supposed to be a bush rose red rose with a tinge of yellow it's not looking the healthiest little thing is it but um i mean when i took it to the pot half the roots were all stuck to the bottom of it so if it lives it lives if not then that. so right so there we go yes but i'm planting this is sorry one of the climbing roses now these things i mean they're a lot tiny wee things at the moment but they're, they're quite healthy enough so 
I had to put that one at a bit of an angle because of the wall and a bit of brickwork under the ground there obviously to keep the wall stable so I've had to put it at a bit of an angle that will face the wall and after a wee while I mean I've, I've obviously got to get some some eye hooks in and a bit of wire to keep it there but I still need to clean this wall I mean I've I had to um, we got the jet wash out the garage, but uh, you know, we'd remember to bring that over from the UK, but uh, but we'd forgot to bring a hose. <laughs> so I'll I'll just get a bucket out and some warm water and give it a good scrub with a wire brush. So so I'm planning that's where the gladio olus or gladioli is gone. I'll just show you the other route. This is the, the red climbing rose. Again it looks healthy enough and um and again the same, I need to make some sort of support for it uh, over the next few weeks, but um, yeah, okay. Now I'm going to put some more bulbs down, just like I've done with the gladiolus, so I'll just sort of plant them down, and then, or plonk them down rather, and then I won't bore you with me showing you them planting the things, but um, let's go on with it, stop rambling. Okay, right, it's uh, it's the next day, rain sort of, uh, <laughs> sort of stopped me yesterday, so I'm, I just want to quickly finish this video, because um, I've got to take my young lad to football training, or soccer as they call it here, um, he asked me to join in the other week there, I was like, yeah, yeah, I need to bother, I nearly killed myself, we're talking under tents, <laughs> right, stop rambling, I need to go, right, so I've got couple of a steel base here now see when I got them they come in a wee bit of a slab I'll just have a wee, 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 wee bit of rhubarb I didn't know the top from the ball so I sort of shoved them in this pot but obviously I put them in sideways so I'll get them in the ground when I come back so I'll get two there and they are just going in the bed I'm going to have the celery and leeks in this bed now Purposely, I'm not putting anything, well, I'm going to put some annual flowers at the back, uh, only because come sort of winter time, I want to get some raspberries in here. So, and this little black cunt bush will be getting moved. I wanted to get it done this year, but I just ran out of time. So, let's go over to the next ones. So, again, here. Just next to the red curd bush, again that will be getting moved as well. But a couple of red hot pokers that have been in. So most of this stuff that I'm planting are hardy perennials, supposedly. Now red hot pokers need a bit of sun, but this, this area does get a bit of sun for most of the day over the summer. Most of the other ones, which I'll show you, are pretty much sort of a uh, part sun, part shade because we don't get full sun in this little garden of ours. So right, I'll move you on to the other ones. Bear with us. Hi there folks. Uh, Kevin back again. I rain sort of uh, stopped play the other day there on the I think it was Saturday or Sunday. So it's now Wednesday the I think it's the eleventh of April. So I wanna just get this video finished. It's getting a wee bit late out there so I'm hoping to try and uh, get these things planted so I'll just show you what I'm doing okay let's go yeah. I've uh, in here I've got some Convalaria majalis or more often known as lily of the valley so I've got one two three four I've got another one which I'm not too sure where I'm putting yet so okay right down in the dark dingy corner of the garden got a couple of hostas going in here and three more going in here so let's hope the slugs don't get them before they before they get up I've also got a tiny little grass but I don't know if I'm putting that there or not so right onwards and upwards onto the onto the next one okay in this little pot we've got uh, Aguilegia this is Aguilegia Macana so it's supposed to be a nice sort of uh, pinky purpley thing so, okay, right, in the back here I've got, I'm not too sure how you pronounce it, uh, Kimika Fuga, or more 
sort of probably more uh, known as Codafolia. Uh, grows quite tall, uh, common name. I've got to do a black snake root, lovely. Okay, down here I've got uh, Aconitum alba. Now I've got five of these, another one here. Now, so I think the common name, the common name is either monkswood or monkswood or something. And I'm not too sure if these are poisonous or a toxic. Um, so I'm not really too sure. I'll need to do a wee bit more reading on it. Um, there might only be certain ones, but I'm going to be growing sort of veg and it's right next to my red currant bush. So, I mean, I don't want to be killing the family. Plus, I don't want to let the missus know she'll be putting it in my salad. So, I'll, I'll do a wee bit more reading on it and um, I'll decide where to plant that in a later date. Okay, down here I've got uh, a strancia, a strancia, major white, again common name master what. Now, I don't know if this one's poisonous as well, because you'll be thinking, what's that guy up to? He'll be phoning the police me. So, again, I'll need to, I'll need to sort of look up a wee bit and whether I put it an area well away from anything that I'm growing, any edibles, then uh, I might be just panicking, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll have a look. It might, I'll do no harm putting it where, uh, putting it another place in the garden where I won't be throwing any fruit or veg. So I've only got a couple more left. I'll put you out of your misery. Uh, you'll be glad to know this is the last one. Uh, Hemerocallus bellilagosi. Ooh. And uh, common name, Day Lily. Uh, so I've just got one of them. I might get some more. Yeah, I, I love my lilies. So, right, that's it. Um, sorry it's uh, been a bit um, all over the place and a bit disjointed. But um, thanks ever so much and I'll, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.